Uh, I'm aware that several pastors have taken action to suspend church services. Uh, I struggle with this one. Um, I look at my church at Pleasant Grove. My entire deacon corner and my entire deaconess corner is probably 65. And they're very vulnerable. Uh, they also fit into this category. Uh, my research uh, says that 80% of the individuals that have died in the U.S. have been 65 or older. So we have to be mindful of that. And back to the churches, um, I'm going to ask the pastors to follow the lead of numerous other pastors that have suspended their church services. I'm not directing you. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. What I'm saying is that we need to be mindful in our pastors. I need you to be mindful of your members and make sure that we are trying to keep them as safe as possible. So I want to reiterate, the bars and restaurants have already uh, taken action to close their lobbies. Our city parks is something that we need to discuss. The flea market will only be open for the produce section only. And pastors, I would strongly recommend that you follow the suit and the precedence that has been set by some pastors to suspend those services. So as far as the city parks, do anyone have any uh, comments about our city parks in trying to make sure that we don't have such a large gathering. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem, I'll start with you. Well, Mayor, I think when we saw um, the governor of Florida start sending folks home from the beaches, you know, the folks who had, whether it was seniors on, on uh, spring break or whoever it was, whatever, you know, those folks were trying to argue the point, oh, well, this is just fresh air and sunshine, or I've spent all this money and I've, I've done all this in preparation for this and all. There again comes the, you know, just the discussion about the numbers of people and those people, in that case, were staying in hotels and were, you know, I, I guess there is an inconvenience of the money they spend or their parents have spent, but I would say with regard to our parks, I know we've never, never in history closed the parks, and I don't know how well that would be received. We would rather folks use this as guidelines, use common sense, and again, be somewhat afraid. But um, with that, I think, also have faith that this is going to be short term, give us time to work through this, let us encourage you to stay home from the parks and in, in large gatherings like that. And um, I'm willing, whatever you guys have in mind and what you think, the, if you think we should make a motion to close them or to, if that is legal, Jerome, I know you can, you can let us know if that is something we can do. I know we can elect to not rent the Weir Center, or we can elect to not have anything or host anything there. Can we do that with our city parks? Well, let, me, let me make sure I'm clear before you speak to all. I'm not, I'm not recommending that we close our parks. I'm not recommending that. What I'm, what I'm recommending is that our citizens adhere to uh, the 10 person gathering <clears throat> that if there's such a large gathering that uh, we may have to disperse that crowd. That's what that's what I'm recommending. I should have been more clear okay. about okay. that. Okay, I see what you're saying then. Excuse me. Because we, legally you can't disperse a crowd unless they're being unruly. Am I right? But we would be we would be making a motion to be able to disperse a crowd or for law enforcement to be able to disperse disperse the crowd mm -hmm. just because of the number of people, right? Correct. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Mr. City Manager. Uh, 
Attorney. Said the attorney. <laughs> to uh, under the police powers granted to the states, to the cities, and to the counties through the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America, uh, the police powers of the city are such that in order to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens, you can take extreme measures in this situation that would include closing private businesses, blocking traffic, controlling the number of people who are gathered in your parks and in your public places. So you have the absolute police power in this situation to do this because this is a pandemic health emergency. And that will allow you to that's do That's what that. we want to hear. Thank you. Okay. So, um, and, th and that's why I want to be clear. Uh, I do want you to understand something that um, if there's a large crowd, uh, the city manager or myself, we will instruct the necessary agency to disperse that crowd because this is the only way that we're going to be able to slow this down and provide time for our health care community to find a resolution to this. Mr. Moore? I think uh, I'd rather go ahead and put up signs and say the parks are closed because if you go and want to disperse my crowd, then I say, well, they've got more than I have over there. What you going to do with them and what you going to do with them? But if it pertains to everybody, then close them up and they know that's what they are and uh, there'll be no gathering. Okay. Uh, Mr. Taylor? Uh, my thought on that is that everybody knows how serious this virus is, and for the safety of the city of Douglas, you know, um, for its closing the park down, kids going to want to play and all, but if there's 10 or more gathering, you're at your own risk, you know. Well, actually, everybody's at risk. At risk, you know. So, um, so I think Mr. Moore makes a valid point, though. Yeah, it's to take the city of Douglas, you know, need to play with size. Mr. Gow? I'm okay with doing what we think is, is best to uh, encourage our citizens to keep under guidelines. I think our best strategy right now is as what we've been hearing, you know, from the president all the way down is to uh, self-quarantine as much as possible to cut down on the on the threat on the spread. Um, from everything I've been able to, to learn, we've had three countries: Taiwan, Hong Kong, and uh, Singapore that have been highly successful in containing the spread, and they have really emphasized identifying folks as early as possible who are possibly carrying the virus and then keeping those folks in isolation to reduce the spread. So whatever we can do that, that would encourage that, you know, keeping in mind that at this point in time we're hopeful that these measures are not going to be in place for a very long amount of time. In other words, I think it's much better to put with the inconvenience. Another thing that's maybe not as, as been prominent, but if everybody's noticed Italy uh, the number of deaths in that country, I think now they're saying it has exceeded China. Um, one thing to point out, uh, Italy has, I think, the highest um, elderly population behind Japan. And so it, it, again, demonstrates the threat that this virus can be to our uh, aging population. And whatever we can do to help take care of our folks that are in the most, that are most vulnerable our elderly citizens and the folks who have health complications that would really uh, be in a bad spot, you know, compromising immune systems and also these. We need to get the word out and everybody needs to remember these precautions and, and just like Mayor Pro Tem said, you know, maybe approach things as if you may be a carrier. Correct. Act in that manner is probably the best way to think about it. So at this time, uh, we have two competing ideas. Uh, to close the park would probably be uh, the best 
to close the park to ensure that there are no social gatherings uh, until we get some type of grip on this. Uh, Mr. City Manager, do you have any comments on this? Steve, do we have anybody booked in the park and stuff? No, uh, <clears throat> no, none. Uh, the past couple of events, they weren't booked to us. We were late earlier this week. We had a conversation. We uh, we we made everyone aware that no, there would be no bookings up in our parks. The ones that we could secure, or uh, you know, the, the east sides, the round tree, the willow part that we can't secure, we put some few signs up. We'll make sure we get more signs out, saying that all all we've ceased all the activities there. The park has been closed. We've locked all bathrooms, so. So no one get access to those bathrooms and all all facilities. So, but no, we don't have any scheduled activities in any park, in any, any park, park, any facility. So we're not counseling any of them. No, no, we okay. don't. So, uh, and, and once again, in the interest of public safety, is that uh, we need to deter away from uh, large <coughs> gatherings, as we talked about the bars, the restaurants, and large family events, uh, the flea market, and churches. Uh, our city parks, uh, we have to do the same. We have to set that standard. Uh, at this time, I make a motion that we close all city parks. So moved. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, uh, of course, we're open to revisit this issue. Correct. Next Monday's meeting, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if we needed to put a term on that or time limit or anything, Mayor, 30 days or something like that. <coughs> let's, let's take a look at it. Okay. Okay. And, Mayor, if we could have Chief Pruitt, that, you know, advise, I'd like to hear from the department, you know, on how this goes, get a feedback on Monday nights. We know, you know, if the, because okay. they're going to be the ones that are going to bear the brunt of having to enforce any such matters. Okay. I'd like to know how. How it goes from their perspective. Immediately. Uh, the next thing uh, on my little laundry list is uh, limiting the uh, citizens' access uh, to City Hall to uh, three citizens uh, at a time in the lobby. Uh, this is to try to control uh, those social gatherings in City Hall. Again, I've talked extensively with our city manager. We do feel that uh, our citizens can use the drop box, and the <coughs> drop box is going to be checked throughout the day. But you can also use the drive-through online payments, and you can also mail in your payments. Once again, as the president said, our best course of action is to minimize social gathering on all levels. So um, I've even talked with uh, the department head about this, and the department head is okay with limiting this uh, to three citizens. I think this is an appropriate action. Um, I know I don't have that many stamps in my house. That's why I use a drop box. But um, we need to take some. Uh, precautionary measures to also protect our employees uh, from being in contact. I would venture to say uh, a number of citizens visit the uh, lobby and just want to put up some type of protection. There is an opportunity for uh, some type of protective glass to be put up. And once we put up that protective glass, then we'll revisit the issue. Is that correct? Thank you. So, everybody okay with that? We don't necessarily need a motion, just instruct the city manager and the department head. You okay with that, Mr. Moore? <coughs> Mr. Taylor? Yes, sir. Mr. Gower? Yes, sir. Uh, my last item on my little laundry list is at this time, the city is not mandating a curfew. But the city has always had a curfew and just never have enforced it. Um, so I want everybody to understand that the social gatherings is a big issue, a major issue. We have not, uh, in, we have not mandated a curfew. I think if you're under 17 or 18, you're supposed to be at the house by 
12 o'clock anyway. But we had, and I did that. But as the situation uh, evolves, uh, we may have to revisit that. Just want to put that out there. Um, so that's my little laundry list. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to discuss the uh, impact of the coronavirus on the city of Douglas operations. That was that item. That was that item. Yeah, I'm go, sorry. When you go back to item five. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, item five, discuss implementation of uh, contagious symptoms and or contagious condition policy. This is a policy that we talked with about uh, city uh, personnel. We don't have a sort of a pandemic policy. And this falls in line with what the county has done and GMA also recommends. This is an ACC, G, GMA, DOGPA um, drawn Everybody. Order, right. Uh, and this sorry. gives the city the ability to control its employees when there's a pandemic or epidemic or whatever. And uh, whether they go home, we send them home, how we pay them, not pay them, and all those kind of things, whatever. Correct. But this is what the cities and counties are adopting. Uh, Mr. Taylor, any comments? I'm all for it. Yeah. Mr. Gow? I look at that as it looks appropriate. Mayor Pro Temp? Yes, sir. I'm going to Mr. Moore? All right. At this time, I will entertain a motion. Second. Second. A motion to second. Any, mm -hmm. any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, before we adjourn, I want, I want to share something with you. Uh, of course, when I was in the military, um, I had an opportunity to be a volunteer firefighter. It was a one-week course. It was going to be a volunteer firefighter, one week. So Monday and Tuesday, we dug a ditch. <laughs> we dug a ditch probably from here to Georgia High State. Man, we used some, some choice words, some superlatives to describe those instructors, and we were hot just mad about it. You know, we thought we were going to be running into burning buildings and all stuff like that. That didn't happen. On Wednesday and uh, Thursday, we uh, ran into houses that were not burning. And the instructor said, when a child is afraid, they hide. So just don't assume that that room is empty. Look under the bed. Look in the closet. If there's access to the uh, attic, look up there. Look for that child. So we would run to all the houses around the house that was on fire. And then we started spraying water on the houses that were not on fire. <laughs> I'm like, man, this don't make any sense. So Friday, the instructor said this. I know y'all don't like this training. He said, but in one week's time, we can't teach you to be a firefighter. What you can do is dig that ditch and have an interruption in that fire. If you dig that ditch and that flame doesn't go across, the trained firefighting professionals can fight that fire because you've contained it. That trained firefighter will be putting out that house that's on fire. But you can run in that house that's not burning and look for those children, look for those elderly people, and then put water on the house that's not burning. Why do I tell you that? Because that's what we're doing with this coronavirus. We're trying to make a break in the spread of this virus. That's what we're trying to do. That's the best thing for the president on down is to interrupt the spread of this virus, to give our healthcare community and our brilliant scientists the opportunity, the opportunity to find a vaccine, to find a cure. But if we can do our part, if we can do our part and slow this down and let the most brilliant scientists on God's earth Figure this out. We'll be all right. We don't want to cause any more stress on the supply chain, 
of our medical uh, staff, and God knows we have to do our part. Uh, people say, uh, you know, God is going to take care of us. I say, I believe that. The Bible also says faith without work is dead. Our work is to slow this down and keep the faith. Those social gatherings, we got to cut those out. We just have to cut those out. And what we have to do as a city is to do our part. And I am supremely confident that the citizens of Douglas and Coffee County are going to do their part. This is just a little inconvenience. It's just a little inconvenience. You know, we open up that shelter across the street for hurricane victims. Individuals that do not <coughs> reside or not citizens of Coffee County. This time it's our turn to take care of ourselves. And how are we going to do that? Very simple. We're going to adhere to what the president has said. We're going to adhere to what the CDC has said. And we're going to avoid social gatherings. We're going to interrupt this virus and give our health care professionals the opportunity to do their job. Sir? Uh, can I? I know normally we don't do this, but um, there's a couple of members of the media here and some other people. I know there may be some questions a couple <coughs> want to ask, and I didn't know, I, I don't want to take over your meeting, but there may be a couple of questions that somebody wants to ask that Robert or Jerry. Yeah, I, I do have a question. Yes. Uh, did you go to the podium? Yes. Turn the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to thank you for what you've done for calling this meeting and discussing these issues and trying to get ahead of it. We followed this with the county and also with the school board. We know it's been very difficult, having to make some very difficult decisions, and there may be even more difficult decisions to follow. And I know with whatever decision you make, you're going to make some people happy. You're going to upset others. And, uh, um, we, we do take that into consideration and we do try to let people know the position that you're in as you make these decisions. So again, I want to I thank you for that. I do have a question, though, regarding the parks. Um, if we're going to close the parks, uh, I guess we're going to use law enforcement to enforce that. What would be the penalty uh, for someone or a group of people who were in the parks after these signs are posted? Go home. Just go home. Go home. Okay. We don't want to impose any type of uh, fine or anything like that. Okay. What we want is to deter that behavior. That's what compliance. we want. Uh, compliance. That's all we want is compliance. We, that's all we want is compliance. But we cannot have these mass gatherings. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, to answer your question, there will be verbal warnings, but if somebody's just not going to listen, then criminal trespass at this time probably would be the appropriate charge or whatever. In a case where we get into a uh, state of emergency that we may have to consider next week as a city and or uh, county implement some stuff, then there would be some, there would be misdemeanor charges for failing to obey the state of emergency stuff. But yeah, that's why we're asking people to listen to our just directives and, and common sense approaches or whatever. Because <clears throat> to Robert's point, so sometimes this makes people mad when government gets too far involved in life, but at the same time when people don't want to listen, uh, then it does force the strong arm of government to do things that normally we don't want to do. But we have, we would start off with verbal commands of asking you to leave the parks or whatever, but if somebody just won't abide, uh, then there would be some the, the ugly side of policing or whatever. But we're asking everybody, you know, it'd have to be an extreme case. Exactly. And it's not something that we're going to be, you know, hey, go home. Right. You know what I mean? Go home. We just we just we're leave you. humbly ask that. Yes. I mean, because... We're all in this together. We're, we're all in this together. And what we're trying to do is to protect everybody. Everybody. And we got to be mindful of that. You know, these are some difficult decisions. But the city of Douglas and Coffee County and the Board of Education, we're trying to get out in front of this. Uh, I've, I've been on the phone with the uh, uh, with uh, CCA. I've talked to them. I've been on the phone with... Uh, uh, Stuart Smith, uh, the chairman of the EDA, trying to make sure that we keep all interested parties involved. Hey, this is what we're considering. This is what we're talking about. Hey, I was on the phone last night with Billy from CCA. Hey, look, da 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 da. This is going on. This is going on. I'm talking to Stuart Smith because this impacts us all. And what we're trying to do is deter social gathering. 
That's our best antidote right now. And I just want to say, just from a, I guess from a management standpoint, you know, Douglas and Coffee County, we are in a unique time in our history. We will look back on this in a historical perspective sometime in the future. And I think it would be a great time if we could look back during this time to say how Coffee County, because we've always been good cities and counties and school boards coming together to work together and citizens. So this is probably the greatest opportunity for us to look at. This is probably the historical moment, the biggest event in all of our lives. Um, and so, you know, take this opportunity to be good stewards of, of, of your monies, of your, your government services, um, be good neighbors, be good church people, come together and look back on this and say, wow, another event came up. Because a lot of times we tout on economic development, we tout on, you know, other things. So this is one of these times where we can come back and say, hey, we came through this. And I'll be calling on city employees, but I need everybody to remember we are public servants and we may be doing things that we normally don't do. Correct. And um, I know we're, we're husbands and we're spouses and, you know, we're children and we're, and we're parents and all that. Um, but, but the city does this. We'll get through this. We will deliver service. Now, it ain't going to be to the level that some of the people expect. But it's going to be a whole lot better than a lot of people do expect. And so bear with us through this. It's, this is a moment that we'll rise and shine and, um, and call on everybody to not put us in a bad situation where we have to be the ugly side of things. Just come together and be good stewards of everything. Exactly. And as I said, we just got to slow this down. That's what all the health care is saying. So at this time... Mayor, let me, let me ask a question. Okay. Uh, I was called to be here for part of the media, so forgive my direct um, reporter instinct. But I was at the doctor's office yesterday, and there was a lady, an older lady in there. Um, she still thinks it's a hoax. Now, I know you say listen to the president, but... She's, she's quoting what our president says. Shouldn't they people direct it to the uh, CDC? Well, I mean, that's, I, that's dangerous. That's okay. dangerous thought because she's not protecting herself. She thinks it's a hoax. So I wish you would address, and maybe you have already addressed her through your first part, but if you would, like we was trying to do in that office, beg her right. to take this serious. Well, I, but I, some I, people I, are not taking it serious. I do recognize that the president did say uh, it was a hoax or whatever it was initially. Mm -hmm. He did say that. Uh, however, he has dialed that back after talking to the CDC and the health care. Uh, this is real. This is as real as it can get. Uh, this is not a hoax. I think that uh, we have to speak with one voice. We have to be clear. Right now, the, the best thing we can do is avoid social gatherings. That is the best thing that we can do. Our restaurants and everybody is doing what they can. So we have to avoid these social gatherings. So, and remember this right here. Our school system has closed down. They are closed. But those yellow buses are still rolling. They are doing more than what they have been called to do. Those buses are rolling and delivering breakfast and lunch to our students. I say that every citizen in Coffee County, we should try to match that level. Let's do more than what is required of us. Because that Board of Education, you can say what you want to say about it. They doing the thing now. And as the city of Douglas and Coffee County, we will get through this. At this time, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Mayor, I want to say one thing. If yes, you, don't mind. you um You had mentioned about um, not eating out, or uh, and I know there's been a burden on our grocery stores and our, our, our places like that for supplies and stuff like that. But let me say, call your local restaurant and see if you can do pick up, drive through, or whatever, and let's help these restaurants and these small business owners stay in business with the skeleton. Correct the skeleton crew they have. Today was my birthday, I know, and, and, and you know, first thing Brian said was, where would you like to have takeout? Mm -hmm. now, now, granted, he couldn't take me anywhere. And, um, but the, the folks, you know, the folks at J&D, you know, they have a curbside mm -hmm. pickup. Several of the places in Douglas are doing the very same thing, so please indulge, please do that on their behalf, if you will. Mm -hmm. Small businesses, same thing. Call if you need a wedding gift. Call Becky's. Go ahead and order it. Go ahead and pay for it this month if you can. Amen. Thank you. At this time, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been motion and second. All.
Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. No, I'm sorry. <laughs>
if you are an older person, stay at home and away from other people. And I'm going to pause right there. Tuesday, I had to talk to my mom, who's 72. What are you doing? You need to be at the house. You need to be at the house. So today, I was talking to my dad. Uh, well, I would call him dad. Uh, he's 75. You need to keep your tail at the house. And why is that? Our elderly are the most vulnerable during this time. So we have to be mindful of the elderly. Believe it or not, at this point, I apologize for the technical difficulties here. The uh, a grandchild could be really bad for their grandparents. The, the grandparents' immune system is not strong enough to fight off this virus. So we're really trying to keep our elderly population isolated. So grandchildren, uh, particularly like my uh, cousin Tyree Simpson, he's over at Valdosta. Well, if he comes home, Valdosta already has some confirmed cases. I mean, he's bad for my Aunt Patricia and uh, my Uncle Cato because they fit in the most vulnerable of our population. So we have to be really mindful of that. My daughters are right now, because they're young, should not be around their grandparents. Um, if you're a person... As a matter of fact, Mr. Moore should not be here. Uh, he is a part of the vulnerable uh, population. Uh, he needs to try to stay in isolation as much as possible because of his immune system. If you're a person with serious underlying health conditions, that can put you at an increased risk. For example, a condition that impairs your lung or heart function or weakens your immune system. Stay home and stay away from other people. Uh, we know that this coronavirus uh, has had a significant impact on our earth, not just our country and our community. As uh, nations across God's earth uh, struggle with this, we have to do our part. And our part is to try to help slow this virus down. Um, and how do we do that? If you are young or otherwise healthy, you are at risk and your activities can increase the risk for others. It is critical that you do your part to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Work or engage in schooling from home whenever possible. If you work in a, cru a critical infrastructure industry as defined by the Department of Homeland Security, such as health care services, pharmaceutical, a food supply, and have a spe you have a special responsibility to maintain your normal work schedule, you and your employers should follow the CDC guidance to protect your health at work. I'm going to put a pause in this right here about our health care. They are stretched out. They are stretched out. The supplies that were on hand are not enough to handle this type of situation. As manufacturers are, are producing more and more supplies, uh, surgical masks, gloves, testing. We have to do our part to help slow this down. So we're going to get into that about social gathering. It also says avoid social gathering in groups of more than 10. We actually violate the president's guidelines tonight having this meeting. Uh, avoid eating or drinking at bars, restaurants, and food courts. Use drive-through, pickup, or delivery options. I learned today that 
the virus can actually live on a surface for a few days. And I was watching a press conference today, and at the conclusion of the press conference, the first question was, what about the gas pump? How many times do you utilize that gas pump? How are you using that gas pump? That virus could be dormant on there for a couple days. So you have to be mindful of that. Avoid uh, discretionary travel, shopping trips, and social visits. If you have a grandparent, you probably need to go to the grocery store for them. You probably need to go to the grocery store for them. They don't need to be out there cutting the grass or anything like that and don't be going over there. Talk through them through a window. They are very vulnerable. Uh, do not visit nursing homes or retirement or long term care facilities unless to provide critical assistance. As you know, uh, our long term care facilities are shut down. Uh, the hospital has set up very stringent rules about entry into the hospital. The president also says, uh, practice good hygiene. Wash your hands, especially after you touch any frequent, excuse me, used item or surface. The gas pump nozzle. You need to have some type of uh, uh, hand sanitizer in your car. Avoid touching your face. Avoid touching your face. Sneezing or cough into a tissue or inside of your elbow. Uh, disinfect frequently. Use items and surfaces as much as possible. So you got to deep clean. You got to deep clean. So this is why we're here. Uh, overnight, I think that uh, in New York City, the number of cases jumped through the roof uh, just overnight. As more tests become available, we're finding out that individuals are having uh, the virus. Now, as I said earlier, our resources are not in the healthcare system up to par. So we have to do our part. Uh, in conversations with the city manager today, the uh, they're moving ships off of the West Coast and the uh, East Coast to try to accommodate. One of the things that uh, communities are doing in the health care, if you're able to go home and self-quarantine, that's what they're advising, trying to maintain as many hospital beds as we can across the nation for the critically ill. We have to be able to slow this down to give our, our scientists the opportunity to develop a vaccine uh, and prayerfully a cure. So we're here to talk about a few things. A few things that hopefully we're going to be able to put our city in a position that we can better deal with this virus if it shall come to the great city of Douglas and Coffee County. Uh, as of today, the coronavirus has not impacted our workforce in Coffee County. I'm not aware of any businesses or industries shutting down or any layoffs. However, when I walk into Walmart, I walk in there as Tony Polk. I see that the shelves are empty. I see that uh, individuals are stockpiling supplies and food to be, in, uh, to be prepared for the coronavirus if it should uh, come to, the, uh, to Coffee County. With that, I think that our citizens are spending some of the money uh, to be prepared to a possible uh, self-quarantine uh, buying food, uh, medical supplies, God knows you can't find any rice, bread, or hand sanitizer. Uh, I was in Walmart the other day and they rolled in a, a bread tray. They didn't even put it on the shelf. I came back in 15 minutes, 75% of it was gone. So I know that uh, Georgia Power has done something pertaining to the utilities. 
what I want to recommend to our council is that uh, I'm recommending that the city uh, put in place a suspension of utility disconnects in late fees beginning April 1st through April the 30th for all residential customers. Our citizens are currently spending extra funds to buy food and supplies in preparation of the coronavirus impact in the city of Douglas. It is my belief that our citizens may require a 30-day grace period to absorb the possible financial impact of coronavirus. Now, as I said earlier, we have zero cases. But the idea of this has made people spend a little extra money. I've probably spent more money on groceries uh, in the last two weeks than I've done all year because it's just my wife and I. We eat out all the time. But we got to have some canned goods in there now, a little bread and a little meat. So that's what I want to open up the discussion. I've been in conversation with the city manager uh, throughout the course of the day, all the way up to about 6.20, uh, discussing this. Uh, the city manager uh, feels as though this is something that that we can do. Do you want, do you have any comment? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm doing fine, sir. Huh? I'm doing fine. <laughs> Thank you. So at this time, I will open up the floor for any discussion. Uh, we do feel strongly that this uh, measure will provide some relief to our citizens and not financially impact our city. Let's start with Mr. Galvin down there. I think it's appropriate that under the circumstances. Um, I'm like you, I went to Walmart as well uh, to make sure that we keep our stuff stocked up. Um, what ought to be concerning to everybody um, is perhaps the mood. You know, I saw a lot of stress and tension on everybody's faces. So uh, what we need to realize and, and uh, keep in mind is the psychological effects that this is having on uh, our friends and family members. Let's make sure that we're, you know, we don't recommend physical contact. I think you went over the, the about the five precautions we've all been asked to take. Uh, but I think now, more than ever, maybe it's important that we are reaching out and checking on each other. <coughs> Folks that you know, particularly our elderly. Correct. Um, it, one thing that, that concerns me greatly, I have an 87-year-old grandmother who's in Vista. <coughs> uh, she just got transferred back to Vista from Coffee Regional last week. And, do, and with some respiratory issues, uh, already having nothing to do with any of this, um, but we can't even go see her. Correct. And so we have thousands of people in and around our community like this. So we need to keep these people in our prayers and do what we can to support them. And, and particularly, as the mayor said, our medical personnel, this is going to put a big strain on them. <coughs> or who, who knows? We don't know. Well, I guess maybe one thing we're worried about is nobody knows how long this is going to last. Correct. Get through it. So we need to. You know, we need to be, we need to be mindful. I don't think we need to be panicking. Correct. Um, but we need to be paying attention and making proper preparations. We've always been taught, and it's been emphasized. That I know in my church, in our you notice. I, I would think well. The Federal Emergency Management Agency and, and George Emergency Management have emphasized that we keep supplies in our homes. Uh, recommended at least keep a three-month supply. I think now we understand loud and clear Correct. why that so, advice has been given over and over again. And so if anything, maybe treat this as a, as a great dress rehearsal for anything maybe coming down the line that could be even more uh, impactful on our way of life and, and our activities. Okay. So, but your comments, you're okay with that? I am. Uh, Mr. Taylor? Um, Mayor, I'm okay with that because it's been, you know, from April 1st to April 30th. Okay. So, like, you said, you know, dis no disconnection. Okay. Can I protest? Yes, Mayor. Um, 
I'm going to sit a little closer to the microphone tonight and speak up a little more. I think folks have a little bit of a difficult time hearing me, so I want to emphasize that I, uh, it's like the mayor and I talked about earlier today, I think the, um, the key here, Mike, you touched on a lot of it, is of course our attitude, but it's about achieving balance here, and I think it's about not going overboard one way or the other. Um, you know, they say our faith has to be greater than our fear, and um, so I, I, I truly believe that, because in the absence of faith, fear can creep in, and um, I want everybody in this community to be prayerful, to be mindful mm -hmm. of other people, and again, they say, from what I've read and what I've seen, um, and I have to keep, keep reminding myself, I'm not to act like Mr. Moore has it, I'm to act like I have it and I don't want to give it to him. So that is what we're supposed to, we're supposed to treat people with respect and treat people as if we're protecting them. And if we keep that in mind, if we just would keep that in mind, like I said, we, we, we broke the 10 man or the 10 person rule tonight to come together to make this important statement and to, and to show people or to tell people how important we think this is. Um, I am all for uh, waiving those those um, suspensions and fees or whatever for the month of April. Mr. Moore? Well, since I'm following that group, people <laughs> keep reminding me of it, and uh, sometimes I think they may know what to talk about. But anyhow, uh, I feel like that it's keep your distance from folks and uh, like people instead of shaking hands and keep your hands washed and I've always been one that to uh, try to keep my hands clean and uh, not cough on other folks and, and now as uh, some have said uh, my wife is in the hospital out here and they sending her to Jacksonville to uh, uh, have a care place and uh, she has uh, breathing problems, which has nothing to do with uh, coronavirus. But uh, people need to act as, as some of you said, that, as if they had it themselves and they didn't want to give it to anybody else. And let's uh, be mindful of uh, looking after ourselves as well as looking after others. So and, um, you're okay with the uh, 30 days? Huh? You okay with the 30 days? Oh, yeah. Okay. At this time, I make a motion that the city of Douglas uh, suspend uh, suspension of utility disconnect and late fees beginning April 1st through April 30th. Second. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I also want to encourage our citizens. Uh, the city of Douglas has a uh, utility hall. This is where you can go on your cell phone and monitor your usage rate. Uh, because we need to make sure that this bill is still due, just as with Georgia Power. This bill is not waived. This bill is still due. Uh, if you're able to pay your bills, please pay your bills. Please conserve energy. We're just trying to brace for impact, so to speak, uh, for the weeks uh, to come. So again, please make sure that you conserve energy. Please make sure that you sign up for Utility Hall and conserve your energy. The next thing uh, on my little list here that I have is how do we conduct our public meetings? Uh, as it's been brought out, we're actually violating the president's uh, guidelines. Um, so I do think that uh, hopefully by uh, Monday we're going to have some more information. But I would like to recommend that we suspend the city's uh, first meeting in April to give us a little bit more time to adjust uh, to this coronavirus. Uh, Mr. Moore, how do you feel about that? That's fine with me. We, have we got another meeting next Monday? Monday. So we're going to continue to have We're going to do that meeting because we have some business that we have to attend. 
We'll take care of that, and then we're going to suspend the first one in April. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mayor, I agree. Okay. And, well, let me back up. Okay. Take it a step further that if there's anything, um, even in that meeting, in the, in the meeting Monday night, if we have staff and department heads who don't have agenda items, I would recommend they not be there. I agree. Anybody that doesn't have to be there, please don't be there. You guys, even with cameras, if you want to set up your camera and not be here, not present, but just have your camera here, that's fine with us, okay? Okay. I understand from you it has to be public, but right. we don't have to have. Um, right, you got to be public. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Taylor? How important uh, do we need because we need yeah. myself. Yeah. Got to. You okay with that? Yeah, but you got to. He's asking yeah. about the meeting money. Well, one of the things we also have to understand about the functionality of a municipality or any governmental entity, we still have to function. Regardless of what's going on, I don't care if it's a hurricane or whatever, we still have to function. It's not business as usual. It's business carrying on with a different spin on it, so to speak. We may not be doing 100% of what we normally do, but we're going to carry out those essential functions. What's the difference between April 1st and what? This gives us enough time to react. This is just primarily for reaction. Okay. Okay. Mike, how do you feel about that? Suspending the meeting. I'm okay with that. Okay. Cool. Want to come back? I wish you enjoyed it. Okay. At this time, I make a motion uh, that we suspend the first uh, Marion Commission meeting of April 2020. Second. So motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carries. The next thing is, and this is uh, probably going to be very interesting, uh, social gatherings. As we've stated, we've already violated the president's 10-person uh, rule. Uh, some of our bars and restaurants have already uh, taken action to close their lobbies uh, using the drive-through, uh, call-in orders, or delivery to try to minimize uh, social gathering. Our city parks, uh, last week uh, down at Roundtree, uh, it was a, a huge event, and I tell folks, if I was 20, that's where I would have been. Because when I was 20, that's where I was. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, coronavirus is something that we're dealing with. So we really have to take heed to these social gatherings. And I'm going to use Roundtree. Uh, because it was a beautiful day. Everybody was chilling. Uh, sun was out. Everybody was just having a good time. Uh, after the park closed, people went up to Park Plaza, they went to the block. Everybody was just chilling. If I was 20, that's where I would have been. But the coronavirus is something that we're dealing with. That sort of impacts uh, us trying to help the medical or the healthcare <coughs> profession. So let's just assume that if someone has it in a large gathering and they go back to their home, they may infect the people in their home. And then those individuals leave and that's how the virus continues. So that's why the president wants us to maintain our social gatherings to 10 people or less. The other thing is we've already made a call to the flea market. Uh, the flea market is going to be running on a skeleton crew, uh, primarily produce only. Uh, we won't have any other vendors out there. We do realize that some of our citizens go to the uh, flea market for fresh, homegrown uh, vegetables. So we're going to keep that open. Is that correct? It's well, just the produce. Just the produce. Just the produce. So we want to make sure that our citizens know that. Uh, 
So one of the things that uh, I actually struggle with is, uh, as the mayor of Douglas, I always feel that my authority stops at the front door of every church in this city. Um, one of our neighboring cities uh, have attributed uh, two deaths uh, to a funeral. Uh, the individuals that, that passed were at the same funeral.